Welcome to Divorce Talk with Nicola Beer, a show dedicated to creating change and emotional healing for executives, professionals, and expats in the various stages of marriage breakdown and divorce. Discover insightful strategies to better manage your personal affairs and learn secrets to creating more happiness, love, and success in your life today. Hi and welcome, this is Nicola Beer and I am thrilled you're listening to this episode because insecurities can be really damaging and destroying. So welcome to 8 Ways to Overcome Insecurities After an Affair or a Breakup. Insecurity is a feeling of general unease that is triggered by perceiving oneself to be inferior in some way or vulnerable. It's perfectly natural to feel insecure from time to time especially after an affair or a breakup. However, if you are plagued by it, where you feel like it's getting in your way of getting things done, then I have eight ways to overcome them in this episode. Insecurity after an affair and separation can lead to sleepless nights, change in eating patterns, overeating or a loss of appetite, and a low mood. It can lead you and cause you to self-examine yourself time and time again. At the root of this is often a belief or a fear of not being good enough, not a good enough partner, lover, provider, husband, wife, carer, not attractive, successful, funny or interesting enough. It only takes one hurtful experience for us to feel insecure for years, unless we work on clearing it of course. And most of us have had more than one painful experience. Often a change in circumstances or a new relationship can awaken insecurities that we thought we'd buried a long time ago and bring up emotions that we don't expect. I've had many men and women doubting whether they are good in bed, marriage material, desirable, or know what it takes to keep a man or woman happy. Let's be clear now. You are more than enough. It's okay if you want to change some things to develop and grow yourself but we must also learn to love who we truly are. So here are my eight ways to help you banish these destructive thoughts and achieve inner peace. Number one is listen to your own inner wisdom. Close your eyes and visualize taking a step outside of yourself for a moment and imagine you are a different person. What advice would you give another person in your situation? Listen to your own inner wisdom. Number two is challenge your thoughts and fears. Ask yourself, are they taking me where I want to go? Because how we view ourselves can directly influence our reality. So start creating a list of things you feel insecure about and then read them over and ask yourself, how many of them are rational? and How many are just a product of insecure thinking? Take time to really think what is in the core of it. Could it be fear of being taken for a fool, fear of people talking about you, fear of disappointing though your loved ones, fear of not having the life you want or want to have? Which of these fears can be tackled? Which of these fears are irrational and need to be let go of? Which of these can you think of a positive solution to? Number three is remember your positive qualities. To keep yourself feeling secure, you need to keep your positive qualities in the forefront of your mind. Remind yourself of all the things you like about yourself, from friendliness, style, intelligence, skills, creativeness, positiveness, any physical things that you're good at. Next next list, compliments that you receive from friends, ex-partners, colleagues, families. And then list what qualities do you like about your own personality? And how would your friends introduce you to someone at a party? What are your best three physical features? I'm going to share some of mine with you because what I tend to find is when I give this exercise to those I work with, they often don't want to do it. They don't want to look at the positive in them. And yet we all have so many positives. I had one lady share that she loved her feet. And she just, you know, and she came round and she showed me her feet and she really loved the way her feet looked. I have a very good friend who also really loves her hands. And she was a hand model once. 
And, you know, so what do you love about yourself? Personally, I really love about myself in my personality is my determination. I don't know where I get it from, but when I'm knocked down, when someone goes against me, when I feel like I'm failing or I face a challenge, then I have to find a solution. And my mind will not stop racing till I find a solution. Sometimes it's three hours, sometimes it's the next day. And then I come up with all the other ideas and then I just go for it. And I come out stronger. If I'm knocked back once, I'll go forward more. The more I'm pushed back, the more forward I'll fight. And I love that about myself. It's also draining. <laughs> um, but I do, you know, I do like that about myself. And I also really love, you know, physical features. I like my eyes. I just, I've always liked my eyes. And I'm, I'm a person that I really like eyes anyway, because I think the eyes are the gateway to the soul. So that's about me. What are yours? And so it's important to remember that we have insecure periods, and when we have insecure periods, we tend to focus on the worst parts about ourselves, which inevitably lead us to be and feel unhappy with who we are. So I strongly recommend that you do this exercise. Write it in a draft email and save it on your phone so you can look at it anytime, and I would love you to share them with me. One of the best ways to guarantee, and this is number four, that you will be insecure is to compare yourself to others. So stop comparing yourself to other people. You know, people you see on TV, in magazines, and even people that you imagine in your head. There will always be people who have what we want, people who make us feel ugly, poor, unsuccessful, or a number of unflattering things because we decide to measure ourselves against them. Yes, that's right. It's a choice to do that. So stop yourself. B, and this is the second four in the eight ways, is take action. So number one in the take action is surround yourself with nurturing company. Pay attention to the friends and family who have positive attitudes about themselves and others and say kind things. If you start noticing that majority of your company is highly critical, criticizing clothing, body, decisions, speech or behavior, you may want to spend less time with judgmental people. While having a few negative people in your life is perfectly fine, if you're surrounded by negativity, even if it's not directed at you, you're absorbing its negative effects. Number two in taking action is boost your confidence. Boosting your confidence can be the best gift you give yourself. Those I work with pick up pick something that they're excited about and I motivate them to stick at it. Here are some of their choices. Boxing lessons, run a marathon, trekking across South America, yoga teacher training, learning Spanish, cycling tour of Vietnam, weight loss, quit drinking, MBA, career change, start own business, charity project, cooking lessons, photography course. So what can you decide today that you want to excel at? What hobbies can you take up? What challenge can you set yourself? Whatever you choose, ensure it makes you feel good. Number three is sexual insecurity and confidence. Forgive me, I'm going to share something very personal now, in the hope that it will help others. Some, after infidelity or a bad breakup, can question their performance between the sheets. This is what happened to me years ago. There are so many things you can do to feel more attractive and confident in this area. And it doesn't involve anything difficult or dodgy. Being intimate after an affair or a breakup can be challenging. So I've listed some tips and resources for both men and women. Don't suffer in silence with this. Take action and get some support and feel amazing about yourself. And number four is talking it out. Talking it out can help you gain perspective and find solutions. A good friend or coach will cheer you on and can help you dispel any of the negativity and doubt that surrounds you. I appreciate it that sometimes it can be difficult to open up to someone and share our experiences, but don't let fear of exposure or feeling too ashamed get in your way of changing how you feel. Remember that you are not alone. You may feel like you're the only person in the world who is constantly doubting yourself, or that you are the only person that feels that you don't quite measure up. But you are not, honestly. 
Insecurities come from past hurts and experiences, and it's important to deal with these in order to move on and be free. Listening to our inner critic can do serious damage to our self-esteem. It can cause us to feel desperate towards our partner or pull back or get angry and reject them in, in fear of being rejected. It can also exaggerate feelings of jealousy or possessiveness or leave us feeling unworthy. So challenge it. Try these steps and get yourself to a point where you feel amazing, where you feel confident, you feel strong and you feel excited about life again. That's what these steps can really do when you start implementing them. So I'd love to hear from you how you found them. You can get in touch with me anytime. Drop me an email at nicola at purepeacecoaching.com or respond to my blogs on my website or on LinkedIn or Facebook, Nicola Beer page. I really would love to hear from you. So from my heart to yours, have an amazing week ahead. Thank you for listening to Divorce Talk with Nicola Beer. If you have enjoyed the program, please leave a rating and review on iTunes so more people dealing with marriage breakdown and divorce get the support they need. If you want more great free resources, such as secrets to a happier relationship, moving on fast after divorce, or tips on parenting through divorce, be sure to visit www.purepeacecoaching.com today.